I think, you know, collectively and, and as other people come in as well, you know, the, the, the rich experience which, 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 which is here in terms of health and health partnerships and the different specialities, specialities and specialisms, et cetera, that uh, you all have and all that knowledge that you bring. Um, um, is um, you know is actually something that we we should treasure and we should mine and we should take forward as as best we can collectively, um, because it's you know it's it's individuals it's institutions, and you know the Esther partnerships are in about fifteen countries right now. So you, you layer that together, that's that's actually an awful lot of different experiences, which you know if we could. You know, really, really kind of, if you thought of it, think of it as a layer cake, you know, just think of all the different flavors and richness that you could have before you have a heart attack after having eaten it. Um, and I'm also conscious that there's a bit of history in this as well, that, that you know, none of what's hap happening in this room today, you know, sort of began sort of three years ago or, or five years ago or 10 years ago, it sort of began a kind of probably over a century ago, you know, as people, you know, who worked in health or with an interest in health, sometimes with a, you know, a missionary background or whatever, went out and worked in very, very difficult circumstances at times uh, and pioneered. And I know many of you will have gone and, and, and worked in similar circumstances, sort of standing on, on the shoulders of who've gone, of people who've gone before and sort of worked in a very different type of medicine at times as well uh, to that sort of privileged first world medicine and uh, that we have here. But also, I'm also conscious that our, our health services have done a lot of transitioning over the last 20 years. And that change story is one that, that's quite interesting. I, I remember uh, about 20 years ago, I was in Serbia and there was a woman uh, who had been elected to the Serbian parliament just after the war had ended. And she'd been here as a refugee and uh, she, 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 she was in a wheelchair. And she said to me, she said, I want to bring Irish services for people with disability to Serbia. And I went, are you crazy? So Irish services for people with disability is not what I would have thought was the model. And she said, no, you're wrong. She said, you're not perfect, but you know that but you're trying to actively do stuff and where you are is an awful lot better than where Serbia is. And we don't want to be Sweden. We don't want to have the best service to people with disability in the world yet. He said, but if we can move on the journey to be more like Ireland, we'd be an awful lot better off than where we were. And there's something about that change story as, as, as we try and change our health services. And we have a curious mixed model of provision as well, which isn't often unlike those kind of mixed models of public private that you get in developing countries. And as we try and shape and mold that, I think there's stories in that institutional piece that uh, we can bring uh, into, into what we do in, in, in developing countries. Um, and, and indeed, we, 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 we are actually doing that. I mean, the, the partnership that I saw, uh, you know, between the health service executive and the Mozambican health service, you know, is actually really, really powerful. Um, when Mozambique became independent uh, in 1974, and uh, it's about, as a country, 11 times the size of Ireland, there were 17 qualified doctors for the entire territory. So that's where they started building their health service from. And in the middle, they had a devastating civil war, which complicated it even further. And so while they've done an amazing amount of work, you know, it's still, you know, some of the statistics are still incredibly shocking. And they can, those statistics, which are getting better, when I moved there first, I think life expectancy was about 42. It's now into the 50s. So that's an example of, of how things are changing, specifically maternal mortality. Uh, kids are getting to, st to staying alive to the age of five and really good work on antiretrovirals. But it, it, if, if those kinds of, 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 of gains are to be sustained, there has to be an awful lot of investment in the health system. And there's some really good partnership and support here. And, you know, and we have to take learnings out of that as well and bring them into other international fora like the UN, the WHO, and others. And those conversations are beginning to happen. And I think that happened at the Global Health Forum that was here uh, this time last year. 
And um, we've been reflecting a lot on those kinds of partnerships and those kinds of things where Irish people have made a difference in health uh, over the last year, because we're doing a new white paper on international development. Government have promised that we'll have a, a much bigger budget in the, over the decade ahead. And as we plan to how we're going to spend it and spend it wisely, I think we've had two things that, that have been on our mind. One is, how can we make maximum impact? And the second thing we've said is, how do we make maximum impact in a way that actually resonates with our citizens at home who are going to pay for it? And, and sometimes, sometimes that latter piece uh, wasn't always on the first thing on our agenda. And I think health, sort of taking that history and that, that tradition uh, where people were working in health services and, and our health clinics for over 100 years in, in other places, often family role models, but also everybody goes to a doctor. You know, people can tangibly touch a health system or know it in ways they can't touch other parts of a bureaucracy. And then all of the connections that people like you and your, in this room have through your work and how you network that out is something that we really want to invest in very deeply moving forward. Because if we do it right, we actually really touch and affect positively the lives of millions of people uh, abroad. And we'd like to see those kind of you know, mortality stats that I mentioned in countries like Mozambique move on and be able to say, well, Ireland played a little bit of that, a little part of that success. Um, you know, and in doing that, I think there's a reflection around quality. You know, if we want to affect really good change, there has to be something around quality within that. And I, mean, and I know in the medical profession, professions actually, because I know in this room actually there's many of you, and sometimes those interinstitutional battles between different medical professions are actually quite tough. Um, but that focus on quality and learning from what you do and learning from mistakes is something that you do really, really well. The focus on data is really, really important. And I think that's something that we want to take that kind of focus and approach and build it better across the range of what we do. And align the different strands of what we do, which will also include education, which will also include food and nutrition, into that broader perspective as well, and hopefully get a good positive feedback loop into better health outcomes and better quality health workers moving forward as well. Um, I think, you know, there's something as well in this about gender equality, you know, uh, and I think those of you who've worked in, in many developing countries, there are very different gendered outcomes in health sectors. And I think, you know, maternal mortality is one. The choices that governments make around health investments often have a gendered comp component. And I think one of the things that we will like to do working with, with you moving forward is ga gathering data from what you see and feeding that into higher level advocacy where we try and change government policies so that you get less negative gendered outcomes in a, from, from health working. And I'm really conscious as well um, that we need to align a lot of what we do with research. So one of the things we've been thinking about is how can we, how can we encourage greater, greater research into the kinds of priorities we have and align our work better with the research agendas of Irish educational institutions and with um, other sources of, of research funding. Um, and I think that's something that we need to, as a conversation that with, with the ESTA partnership, we need to kind of take forward as well over the next while. Is what, are the, what are the right questions that need to get put out there for, for research? What are the learnings that would be really useful? And how could we best construct the, the kinds of structures which would enable the best possible kinds of consortia to be built? And how can we use them to leverage other sources of finance? For example, Horizon Europe money as well, so that we, you know, we become you know, bigger than the sum of our parts insofar as we can. Um, and one of the things within that I think we, we, we are going to do a little bit of thinking about is, is, is what is change, you know? And, and part of the problem that I think we face uh, is, is a sort of a demand for instant results. And um, whereas we know from real life that change isn't linear, you know, change, change can go backwards before it goes forwards. And, and mistakes happen, and particularly when you're working with weak partners or weak institutions or people who don't necessarily have the same level of educational sophistication yet, you know, not, you don't always get an optimal decision. 
sometimes the optimal decision isn't actually obvious. So I think as part of that sort of research piece, but I think also in terms of how we capture the narratives, is trying to, trying to find ways to, to un, unlock the complexity of the changes we're trying to, 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 to work with you and others uh, to build. And, you know, acknowledging that, that complexity also brings in questions of attribution and contribution, and can we actually attribute and contribute uh, precisely what it is? And I think the truth is often we can't, or we can at a micro level, but not necessarily at a macro level. And I think there's a com there are conversations around that that we have to take forward. Um, you know, and also understanding that while we might be working in places where institutions are weak, change is often dynamic. And uh, how, do we, how, do we ca how do we surf the wave of dynamism when it's there and know when to jump off the board when the wave is about to crash as well? Uh, so we, we, we go somewhere else. Um, and I think, that kind of thinking is, is, is where we want to go strategically, and I think there's a lot in that that we'd like to take forward in conversations. You know, and our, our new strategy isn't going to be prescriptive because we want to do it to 2030, and if we get too prescriptive now, I think we lose that sense of complexity and that sense of dynamism that I think we need to unlock. What We want it to be kind of more iterative, but with a clear eye on very key elements, and health is going to be very much there. We want to drill down and become so much better at that over the next 10 years. So that in 2025, if somebody wants to do something in health globally, one of the people that they'll ring up first will be Ireland. And I think we have a real opportunity because of the work that people like you do um, to do that. But I think that brings a certain number of challenges for us, but also that we'd like to put out to you um, if we're going to try and, 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 and do that. We want to make sure our voice in development for on health is amplified. So we need to work better with you. So we say the right things to the right people at the right time, backed up with the right evidence. I think as well, um, and I mentioned that sort of, you know, there's a certain atomization which characterizes elements of, of, of health healthcare in Ireland. And that's just, you know, and that's something that systemically we struggle with, I think. And I think the more we can work in deep partnerships, the more we can achieve. And I think a question is, how can we best do that? What are the right stimuli? How can we help kind of really make more profound the work that people do now so we get the right kinds of results? And how can we build economies of scale and, you know, through working together in the most effective ways? You know, do we need to concentrate on particular geographies, for example? Or is it okay to spread it out? What's our, what's our collective vision on that? I think that's a question that, 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 that we could really benefit from some interesting conversations around. What are the optimal types of partnerships? When is it the right time to go on one's own and work with others? And when do we bring new, you know, working with other people in the room, optimize uh, the, the impact that we have? You know, when are we, how can we be flexible? How can we be innovative? And uh, how can we make sure we always have an eye for impact and results at the other end? Um, and I think at the end of the day, how do we make sure that no matter what we do, that we're people-centered, that what we do and the impact we have is focused ultimately on making the lives better for the people at the other end of, of the pipe so that we make their lives better through our interventions. And with one of those challenges, I don't want, it's not to suggest that these aren't considerations that, that, are, that, are, that aren't at the heart of what people are doing today, but I think we can do even better and I think that's the conversation that we want to take forward, you know, over the next two or three further iterations of, 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 of the Esther, Esther Partnership Forum, because I think uh, these are the conversations that will, will really maximize the contributions that everybody here is making, for which uh, I will finish off by saying thank you very much.